Howdy folks. Uh, just sorting myself out here. Had to do a restart and reinstall Discord. Among other things. And OBS wouldn't run till I updated. So I'm just getting myself sorted here. Let me just get rid of some of the shrapnel from that. Seems to have um Awesome issues. We just let everyone know that we're going. <sighs> right. So apologies for that. In fact, let's just go to talk first. Uh, I've no idea what's going on with my um. Webcam. Okay, what's going on here then? It seems like a different size. Did I rearrange the window last time for OBS? Oops, I have tea. I also have coaster upon the floor, which was stuck to the bottom. How's everyone doing? Oh, hello, I post. How are ya? And how is Florida? Is that camera pointed right? Or we're just in a different position. Sorry about the fan noise behind us, but it's a bit warm. We'll cool down in a bit. I can turn it off. Sorry, I'm mumbly, mumbly, mumbly. Uh, it took me longer to get started than uh, I anticipated. I swear that camera's at a different angle. Hold on. Maybe. How are you? How are we strange? Uh, hey, hot, he said. I hear Florida reach you. Yeah, we had, we went over 40 degrees in this country the other week, which is nuts. Uh, this week it's going to get up to about 36 again, apparently. We just can't cope when it's like that. Everything shuts down. Our railways, you know, the rails aren't designed to work in those sort of temperatures, and the steel expands. They were painting them white prior to the last heat wave in a vain attempt to stop them buckling. Why is my right hand side of here? I can't quite work out what I did last time. Strange. I should try and set up for um, the next bit. Let's just get this open. Uh, select a few windows. What am I needing? Summary. Summary should be cool. There we go. Set that up. Okay, cool. We have tea. See, stupid English. It's hot, what do we do? Drink hot tea. <laughs> Insane. <laughs> nice summer day for us. 40. It's just not a nice summer day, that's just outrageous. Especially in this country. It's goddamn insane, man. <laughs> I post says, I visited twice. 
You had no ice cubes. <laughs> That's where you go. I mean, we have a fridge that makes ice, although it hasn't been making ice for a long time because the fridge is somewhat broken. Not only that, I had to move it to the other side of the room because, well, because we were rearranging stuff and um, it doesn't have the plumbing for it where it currently is. Not that it matters at the moment because it doesn't work properly, but yeah. So we have to buy ice now in bags, which is a pain. Hmm. Actually, where I'm working, uh, I'm contracting at the moment, is down on the south coast. And one of the good things about that is it's quite often breezy. So, uh, in the uh, building where I am, it's, um, we open the windows at either side and uh, a breeze kind of passes through really, because it's on quite open area, farmland almost. Um, it's like an industrial estate in the middle of farmland. So we get quite a nice flow of air um, through the place, which is good otherwise it'd be un unbearable because they don't have any um, air conditioning or anything like that. You don't get air conditioning really in this country. Yeah, well, most places. Some places you do, but generally not a lot. Hey, there's Laurie, look. My fridge dispenses ice cubes fine. Well, mine used to before it was unplumbed and before it was uh, a little bit uh, fucked let's say excuse my French we need to get another one but it was a real palaver getting the uh, fridge in because we had to take two doors off to fit this American fridge in uh, and I don't just mean the doors of the fridge we did have to take those off but we had to take our uh, two doors one into the building one through the building into the utility room where it was, where we placed it. It took them hours and hours. They're meant to deliver a whole bunch of fridges and they spent like most of the day here trying to fit our fridge. It was insane. So I'm not in any hurry to put another one in because I'd have to get the old one out first, which is a nightmare. And you can't just destroy these things, of course. They don't really fancy taking the doors off again. So yeah, it's kind of being put off at the moment, but at some point I need to um, get something sorted. It was actually a very expensive fridge, but there you go. It was made by... Um, is it Samsung? I forget. Yeah, Samsung. Yeah, Laurie's saying that to practically dismantle his fridge to get it in the building. We don't have very big doors in our houses over here. There is a standard door size. Um, heaven help you if you own like an old cottage or something no chance to get one of those large fridges in them now uh, lorries is a samsung as well yeah they they sell a lot in the uk um Are you blaming your son for insisting on an American style fridge? Well, we kind of, you know, when, when we had kids and stuff, it was quite useful having a big fridge like that. Less so when the kids uh, left home. I say left home. Both of them are back here and not just for the summer either. So, um, hey, 
we're going to need that fridge space again. So, uh, well, what am I going to do today? Uh, I just figured we could chat, talk about stuff, get an update whilst I work on uh, getting this documentation up to date and you can point out things that I need to change as I'm going along. I know you've got a few on your list of changes, Laurie, that I need to do. Let me just switch and see if we can... Um, Uh, why is that asking to unlock? That's weird. That was really, really weird. That just came from nowhere. Asking me to unlock something. Maybe it was my email. Um, let me get the right uh, scene up here. Very odd. It's like it used my email address. Maybe it was the email client trying to log in, but that's in the browser. It's because I restarted everything, I guess. <sighs> did, 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 did I move this once more? I bet I did. Forever clout in this thing. What, what has everyone else been up to? Just while I set this up. I don't like the colours it uses for um, markdown. My light doesn't seem to be as strong as it used to be. Mates need a new bulb. I post says, well, finally finished my SBI Master Slave System Verilog Simulator. Mm -hmm. Work has been very, very busy. But I needed to understand SPI for, a for FPGAs. Cool. Likewise with my work, because I've recently started this new contract, um, basically. Uh, me and some others have just been dumped with this massive code base that's about 30 years old or started about 30 years ago um, and we're porting it to a new uh, a new platform completely different vendor previously it was uh, 68,000 Motorola 68,000 and then Cold Fusion and now it's um, in fact it's going on a um, Renesis um, it's a really odd micro process in fact there's several microprocessors but this particular bit is really odd it's a um, RZA1H and if you look it up you'll see it's uh, quite odd it has 10 megabytes of SRAM internal how about that how cool is that it's a uh, A9 so it's uh, an A class um, processor. I think you'd normally find this sort of thing, you know, being used towards kind of Linuxy stuff. In this case, it's running um, RTOS, FredX RTOS. It's my first time using that particular RTOS. It's actually quite good, actually. I'm quite impressed. Um, and FredX was, um, I can't remember who originally uh, had that product, but Microsoft obviously. Um, acquired them or at least acquired the software so they've done a lot of work on it it's very interesting but yeah this code base is huge and it's all written in C and some of it's very old C um, 
so yeah the last two days we ported a very large quantity of files and the number of warnings we get by running it on a new compiler is just unbelievable it's just incredible you know we've got like tens of thousands of warnings <laughs> because the old compiler infrastructure it was written on was um, clearly not that brilliant in checking stuff what do you mean no depreciated stuff Western basically it, it's really weird what they did was um, so obviously it was designed I don't think it was actually designed for the 68,000 initially but certainly in recent history that's all it's run on is 68,000 and then what that became cold fusion I don't know how much you know about that stuff but um, they actually stopped making it um, it was um, I think it's owned by NXP now but it was Freescale before that who had the cold fusion stuff um, stop asking me to unlock stuff God, something keeps hassling me to unlock stuff. Um, oh, maybe it was um, GitHub stuff. I don't know. It will come back. Um, sorry, where was I? So yeah, uh, Freescale obviously acquired all the Motorola stuff, and they continue to develop in Cold Fire. So, um, yeah, and I think the last compiler system that they used on it and um, ID was CodeView. And I can't remember what compiler they used, but it was a bit rubbish, quite frankly. Um, so, yeah, putting it through a modern compiler reveals all sorts of crap. And we've only touched a fraction of it. We haven't, we haven't even touched, you know, quarter of the files I don't think at this point but we just had to do I just we're working on it in sections but it's, it's like you, you just peek in and start opening something and then all the dependencies come out and it's just all over the place even though the architecture is actually quite nice and it's all separated into uh, threads and it uses you know good architecture between them like queues for communication and stuff and uh, you know flags you know supported by the operating system and delays supported by the operating system it's, it's, it's good it's been quite well engineered however they haven't applied any you know standards they haven't used MISRA they haven't done anything like that and as I say some of the code goes back a long way so as you can imagine it's uh, it's been changed quite a bit uh, and the style isn't consistent either um, so yeah, it's a bit painful. Um, I can see a lot of it being changed, but we're, at the moment we have to forward it. So the the, the entire reason for um, for this contract is, I mean, it was written by and engineered by someone that's n no longer working at the company because they became ill, and. Um, I think they were going to retire as well but one ran into the other kind of thing um, and people have come and gone over the years obviously uh, there's a few people that have been around a little while and there's one guy that's been around a long while but he's not working for the country co company he actually contracts and he's not in this country he's he's in Europe somewhere but he's the only one who's got any insight to this code but he wasn't an embedded developer he was primarily a Windows developer because there's a whole bunch of Windows code as well. And then there's a young guy that's kind of a Windows coder as well. And he's doing some of the embedded stuff. Um, but um, the reason they're doing it is it's actually slightly daft. But they, because it was all based on these cold fire things, they managed to get some chips to keep them going. But then they had to redesign it. And for one reason or another, it all got messed up and they spent. I think like a decade uh, going to this new design 
you know, with other designs in between that weren't successful effectively for one reason or another. Um, and because of the part shortage, um, they had to choose a new platform. So they've done that. So they've basically recreated this entire system and it's, it's a bit like a rack mounted system. So there's, you know, a, a main computer, if you like. Um, and then there are a whole bunch of option cards that plug into them. Um, and there's a bunch of PLDs joining everything together and you know each one of the add-on cards will have its own processor and own P PLD and God knows what else. It's, it's really quite complicated but all they're doing now is recreating the exact same boards in this rack system but instead of using cold fusion they're using Renesis ARM, ARM chips. So the code has to be ported as is right now. Otherwise, they literally won't be able to sell any more stuff. So, a bit challenging. No, it's not military, it's industry. It's, it's almost critical infrastructure, which is why I was surprised that they didn't use, um, you know, a more critical um, standard in the coding and things. There you go. So yeah, I'm I'm kind of getting my head around the code base now, but it's so big that um, yeah, it takes some getting your head around. And the way it's been done, I mean, it seems exceptionally convoluted to me the way that the, the way that the electronics has been designed, and therefore the way that the software has to be designed to run on it. It's extraordinarily overkill. Um, but it is interesting and there may be an opportunity to um, design a new system as well. And I am talking to them about that. Once we get them through their crises. But uh, yeah, very challenging. It's taken a lot of my time and a lot of my um, conscious thought just getting my head around this thing. You know, when you're suddenly parachuted into that kind of size code base with that kind of age in some of it and there is no documentation, the code itself isn't documented, uh, all the protocols and things that are used are not documented, it's... Um, it's extraordinarily difficult to get your head around. You know, you've just got to try and find some small chunks to take first, and then you start eating away at it, and you start getting into the code base and start getting a feel for it. But uh, it's uh, it's an uphill battle. But I am starting to get my head around it now. Thank goodness. So iPost is saying, yeah, that's what I'm dealing with now. Same boat, iPost. It's not uncommon. I've been parachuted into this situation a number of occasions. <laughs> that's what happens when you do contracting. You quite often put in this. I'll tell you what is interesting. I was looking at the PLD parts, and you're not going to believe this. They're all written using ABLE. I haven't heard that name, A-B-E-L, since the 90s. And I was looking through it, it's actually very simple. But the PLDs they're using, these Xilinx ones, God, they're so expensive. You can't get hold of them for love nor money. But they are so expensive and they are rubbish. They're like pathetic. You know, there is nothing in them. It's like 200 and the largest one has 256 macro cells. But yeah, it's quite extraordinary that they just redesign the whole thing rather than designing, you know, new product. But there you go. So yeah, fun, fun, fun. But I am starting to come out the other side of it. And, you know, this week we've got, I don't know, nearly 50 files ported or something. So we're actually starting to get things running. There's no tests or anything in it. So I've written a test framework inside it. 
um, that can then exercise the bits that we're porting and things so that we'll have a code base that can be tested so if we come to port it again it'll be a lot easier because it is going to be ported again because they're gonna it's going to be divided up to run on different platforms and stuff but it's uh yeah so this uh, today was quite satisfying because i've been working on some stuff and then i managed to merge uh my stuff with a whole bunch of other stuff um that someone merged in uh, and we're down to about 400 and 4,750 4, warnings <laughs> it's ridiculous <laughs> but that's just for the code we ported there's still loads more but it runs <laughs> it runs only part of it um, yeah so joy of joys but to, this week was actually quite satisfying because we've got some stuff going Uh, as I post this, but it pays. They are paying me very well on this job. So yeah, that's why I'm doing it. Um, do you use formal verification to make sure the system mimics the old? There's no easy way of doing it because they don't have any tests or anything. Um, and they don't have any hardware, um, um, what do you call it, harnesses or anything like that. So there's no software test, there's no hardware test, it's just, yeah, you know. Which is why I'm busy writing tests and trying to get everyone else to write tests as they go along as well. Not unit tests because it's just pointless doing that at this, this point in time we'd still be doing it in two years time and we have a test deadline in September we've got to get approval on some of the hardware it's going for EMC testing and auditing and God knows what else so it needs a base level of code to be able to run on that and then all of it's got to be shipping we've got to finish the main port by January ship it before spring so, yeah. It'd be very difficult to prove it. And it's very complicated, extraordinarily complicated. Yeah, if you if you want to prove a system, you have to design it to be proved. You have to put all the hooks in there to enable that, both hardware and software. I mean, they threw a crap load of hardware at it, but not necessarily in the right places, in my opinion. Is this something that controls the hardware? Basically, these are glorified uh, measurement devices. They go on oil rigs, power stations, uh, you know, they, they can measure gas flow, water flow, that kind of stuff. So it's industrial and they're rack mounted systems. So they hook up to all sorts of uh, industrial tools. Um, and measurement systems. Uh, it's not that rugged actually, I mean it's rack mounted, I wouldn't call it particularly rugged. It's certainly over designed. But it's not rugged as in has to be carried around, it's fixed in place.
Uh, yeah, I've got some here, but I couldn't actually show you just in case. I don't know. I've got the insides of one of the rack, not all of it, just part of it enough to run the main main controller. So I'm doing some of the work from home as well now, which is good. But yeah, it's um, there's some very very um, nasty code in there as well. There's one function that has been written most recently, actually, that um, that receives, among other things, a pointer. Um, this is for um, effectively writing firmware and data to Flash, uh, and it's basically a write function and I got really really confused by this low-level functionality because I couldn't work out where the arrays was turns out the write function does the arrays as well and the way that it does it oh that looks a bit fuzzy the way that it does it is you get it to arrays by passing a null pointer into the function call I mean for fuck's sake and then the code all the way down and the code it calls all looks for this null pointer I mean what does it take you just write another function in the same file call it arrays and you pass a parameter how difficult is it why would you possibly rely on something that has a null pointer idiotic so there's a lot of that kind of stuff going on and it's just like god it's just to ask for trouble so yeah interesting And then they do things like write some new bits that you're expected to hook in and you find that they haven't followed the previous API I'm talking very loosely API I mean just the function prototypes in the headers would be nice you know not anything written down they'll completely rewrite it so it doesn't fit with the old stuff at all and then you have to adapt it and it's like wow Thanks for that. Yeah, we haven't had a chance to do anything automated on the code. We would like to do something. We can't do it for the September deadline because we just haven't got time. But the deadlines beyond that would be nice. But we're trying to work out what we can use. Um, there's so much that needs changing, frankly, um, and so much that needs checking. We're going to need some automation, but the trouble is when you start relying on automation to do changes like that, it inevitably breaks and, you, and it's not always visible what it's broken. You might not find out until much later that you've broken something. So it's you can't just rely on automated um, issue finding. You still have to go through it by hand and see if changing it is going to break something else, which is very diff difficult because it's kind of the whole thing is dependency. How it looks just unbelievable the number of source files is just crazy I mean I like a larger number of source files because they've broken things down but some of it is just madness I mean there are hundreds of calculation files to go with different um, instruments and the whole thing is dynamically constructed to a degree 
depending on the type of sensors and things that are being installed with it. They've got like a you know a Windows configuration system, and you choose they choose all the different things that are going to go together, and that configures the way that the system operates to a degree. Um, they also have a scripting engine in there that runs Lua scripts so that the customers can change stuff. I mean it's it's just bonkers how much stuff there is in there. Uh, I found some dead code today so yeah there was a large chunk of code that was copied in fact from another header file it was identical um, I've ripped all of that out I only needed one line of that and that value changed as well so yeah there's bound to be a lot of that uh, Western saying you've got to keep a record of the warning count before and after intervention Well, I think uh, one of the other guys who's working on this remotely said at one point he had 2.4 million warnings <laughs> before we started culling the files and the includes to be able to do something with it. It was just ridiculous. It's just the sheer volume, really, that's, you know, that's the problem. This thing keeps asking me for my password. I wish I knew what it was. Why can't it tell me? I think it's my email client, but there you go. Um, anyhow, enough of my day job. It is finally settling down a bit. Hopefully I'll be able to see the trees for the wood. Tea's finished. I'm onto the cold drinks now. I say cold. This is actually lukewarm. I wonder if there's any ice left in the fridge. Hold on. Ice. I turn this fan off because it's probably a bit annoying. It's cooled off a little bit. Golden. Well, I didn't put much in. <laughs> I post is taking the Mickey out of it for not putting much ice in. It's actually my daughter's ice. She went to the shop and get some. I don't want to pinch all our ice. I'll be in trouble. Oh, that's better. Yeah, well, if you get a drink in Florida, like an iced tea, it's like about, you know, this big. And it holds like a gallon or something. But most of it is ice. I saw something on, I think it was Twitter or something. And it was a drink and it looked really nice and cold. And then they like had some pliers or something. And they picked, picked the ice up and the ice filled the glass apart from a little perimeter around it. And they lifted it up. 
and the whole block of ice went down to the bottom virtually and there was just a little bit of liquid around it so when they took the ice out there was about that much in the bottom of drink <laughs> I mean it is nice to have cold drinks but sometimes you just get too much ice and it's just like well is there actually any drink in there because you just end up drinking water when the ice melts But anyhow, it's fun writing C again. Very interesting. Right, let's get some of these uh, documents fixed. Where were we? What was, the, did, were there any, um, I better check, is there any issues? Can't see any there. So, um, what do we need to fix? Come on, Laurie, you had some stuff you mentioned the other day. What did you mention? What do I need to fix first? We were thinking about the hierarchy, weren't we? Being changed. So at the moment we've got this kind of hardware bit, tools, tiles, blades, reference. There was something that you wanted to change. The tools would be separate. So tiles, blades, common, core, was it? Set up MD needs fixing, right? Let's have a look at that. Let's do that first. Set up, set up, set up. Can't even see set up. Let's have a look. Here we go. Ice logic deck. That should be bus, right? And we haven't even covered that yet. And that's still pointing at the old one. But we don't have a new one to point that at yet, do we? Not from a setup point of view. Uh, we have black ice. Sorry. We have um, black edge NXT. Don't be just saying it needs fixing. I need to know what to fix. I'll come back to the setup because I need to work out what that means. Not sure what set now setup was meant to be um I think that was gonna be installing the software as in setting up the software. So that's probably going to be changing quite a bit anyhow. Um, probably not going to do setup today, but anyhow, let's do. Um, what was the other one you mentioned? Tiles needed changing. Let's have a look at that. Tiles. Oh. What? What? Oh, I see. It was just a code part. Um, LED test example. We start with a standard tile resource abstraction. Yeah, well, we're not using that one anymore, are we? Um, so for tiles, I mean, the LED example we can do on a blade, and I've got the blade LED there. So the example for a tile should be. Um, Oh, that stuff comes off. Just noticed. On this filter, can you see at the top? See where it's coming off? So it's transparent at the top. And then dark below. The coating seems to come off. This one has been kicking about for a bit, to be fair. Um, I think the best example, or well, examples are things like the seven segment. There's no point doing an LED tile. I 
Um, so this is the oh, this is the new documentation. The live one. That's the committed stuff. Yeah, I have a local copy as well. So what do we do for this tiles? Um, there's no point doing an LED example. We've already got some examples in tiles. What do we have? Let me just remind myself. So under tiles, we've got Blinky, seven segments, audio and video. Blinky doesn't actually go under tiles, does it? That just uses the onboard um, LED, doesn't it? Let's just double check. Blinky. Examples dot blinky. Simple LED blink blinky example using the blue part of the RGB LED on the Ice Logic deck. There it is again. That's and it's one word. So this doesn't actually go in tiles. Um, where does Blinky sit then if it doesn't go under tiles or blades? Are you going to paste the structure? You did paste one before. Yes. Link under examples. So, right, okay. So, if we have uh, examples like thus. Uh, that's there. Oh, yeah, what's that one? And this needs, oh, stop asking me to unlock my private keys. It's got to be a bloody browser asking me that. It's very annoying. And I suppose we'll have to have an intro. Oh, no, 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 no. I didn't want to do that. I want to do. Just copy that, put that in there. Can everyone read this or do I need to enlarge it slightly? So I can increase the size a little. If that's any help. Crikey, that's very large now. Um, the examples. This needs to go, needs promoting, and these need demoting, thus. And then Blinky. Go here. Like that. So what's on your diagram? Blinky tiles blades QSPI memory. Ah, oh, QSPI, that's a good idea. And reference should be cause, shouldn't it? So let me just rename reference reference two of those don't need two of those let's just delete that one and let's rename this to core 
the summary this is now called core and this is called core um, should that go under examples core should it go under should it be at the same level as examples or underneath a child of examples Laurie, do you think? Uh, blaze, blinky, blaze, toys, and I need QSPI. QSPI. I can go here. Wait up. Don't knock it on the floor. But you, you put it in there. This will be uh, QS Prime Mem and QS Prime Mem. Do we have a QS Prime Mem? Yes, we do. It's there. Um, summary, 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 summary. Okay, that's good. Um, memory was the other one. Yeah, so you want QS by separate from memory? Ah, you've got Qs by and Qs by mem. Did you do that on purpose? So let's just do that then. Don't have a Q spy. And I've just lost one of my brackets as a bit awkward. And you want uh, memory. So you don't want to put Q spy mem under memory. I know it's not exclusively memory. is a simple communications protocol that enables host black ice black ice <sighs> edge FPGA transfers and communications Serial, let's say, because it is kind of serial. Uh, this can be a sin pool, <laughs> nice one, as programming the flash. Or FPGA, or rendering flash, uh, comma, FPGA image or reading and are writing are very clever image or reading and writing to from 
to and from. I was thinking of describing QSPI link in the QSPI MD and then put QF QBus LCD Pi example as a QSPI mem example. I was thinking of just having memory controllers in the memory. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so in terms of the code, um, hold, 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 what have we got we need? So if we look at Enki, for example, then we have this kind of affair, so let's copy that, put that in here, and then what we want to include is QSPY mem, I guess. Um, You've got QBus 7 seg. QS by mem. Should we use the QBus 7 seg as the first example? So um, this one here. What? Come on. Okay. Cubas uh, seven sec. Stop asking me for my freaking password permissions. Cubas seven sec. Okay. I just want to make sure that this picks this up. Let me just do a build. Let me just check. Where's the browser window gone? Yeah, it's picking up the code. Quite it's a long one that. Um It was only suggestion of the current example is a bit better. You probably want to improve it as you start populating. Let's add in the um, memory section because we haven't added that yet. It's really annoying that it goes to that level. Let's just do a copy here and paste. So we want to call this what memory, right? Memory, that would be called cool memory. Um, let's just create that here. Creaky door, I need to shut that so it doesn't do that. Memory will have 
Now, memory. And hyperflash. Let's create two new files. Hyperam. Flash. Oops. Let's just save those. Let's just save that. Let's just do a quick build. Do 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 do. You might prefer hyperbus to hyper memory. I was thinking we might. Add QSPI flash memory under memory. Yeah, well, it's quite possible. Quite right. So let's just publish this. Hustling me, warning thing, doing my head in. Let's do a quick build. Let's just do a push. Let me just check. This causes 43 change files because it rebuilds the um, HTML stuff. At some point, we've got to change that so it doesn't do that because it's a bloody nightmare. Reference. Uh, GitHub or a GitHub agent that was trying to unlock because <laughs> it wouldn't push until I filled that in. <sighs> Dooby dooby doo. Right, I've just pushed those changes, uh, Laurie, so you can check them or anyone can check them really. I'm going to have a drink for a sec. A refreshment. Am I a bit too dark here? Should I turn some more lighting on? It's my new dark period. Let's just 
head appearing out of the darkness. There should be light on here. I don't know why this isn't. It used to illuminate a bit better than that. Hmm, now it's starting to feel a bit peckish. Is it candy time? <laughs> I could have something more healthy, like a banana, but that's really my fruit for tomorrow. I might just have something unhealthy in a sec. Have you updated the general documentation? Yes. Yes, I most definitely have. Um, is it not yet appearing? It, sometimes there's a delay on the um, on the GitHub pages, which is what it's using. in this in a minute and borrow a bit more of my daughter's ice Shh, don't tell her she comes through hmm. oh crikey for the structure now. Uh, you probably want to change AVMD to VGAMD. Wait a minute, what are we talking about? Which one? This one, audio video, AVMD. And we've got separate audio and video parts. So this audio and video could talk more generally about audio and video. What's on there? Hold on. AV dot MD. Hmm. See, it says audio and video tile. That's probably wrong. So that's not true. Why does it talk about VGA driver and timings? Hmm. And then. Under, oh, we've got video under that, which talks, which is got the timings in. So this should talk more generally. I don't think this should have any code, should it? I'm just going to keep this as generic audio and video section for the moment. We need to add some more text in there. But yeah, when we do HDMI, that will go under this section. Um, and then underneath this, we've got one audio. No, I don't want audio.py. I want audio MD. I'm talking about tiles and we probably shouldn't talk about tiles um, I was trying to remember I think we were putting audio on the proto tile if I remember rightly like that for the moment. I probably want to change AVMD as audio will be underneath under the HMR. Yeah it's also on the prototype time. 
I thought you had audio on the H. Yes, we do have audio on the HDMI tile. So there will be a separate um, in the tile section. There will be. A, let's do that now. Uh, I don't have. I don't have the examples in here anyhow. But under audio and video, what we we'll probably have is something like this. HDMI. Uh, digital. Got to be careful with trademarks. Might just call that AVD audio video. Audio digital video. ADV. Maybe. No, I know what I called it, DAV, Digital Audio Video. Uh, have I created the tile? No, I don't think I have. summary is oh excuse me digital audio video that's what I should say audio digital audio Probably let's let's use can we get away with putting that in there? And video. Still need to remove tiles.md content for something more general. Yeah, yeah. We do also. I don't like the capitalization here. Um, let's have a look, tiles. One thing I could do at this point is put a link in to, oh, let's find, hold on. Repository is tiles. Even though this is out of date, it'll be useful to have this reference.
Let me say, just copy this shit. As copied from the repo. So it's just an intro really, no code on that at this point. QSpy's mem is in two places. Right, let's correct that. That'd be a copy and paste, I'm guessing. Uh, yeah, so hardware, hardware, what was I thinking there? This is connectivity. Well, one thing that we have to be a bit careful about here is we're actually talking about more than one thing, aren't we? At one level, we've got QSPY, which is the interface between the STM32 and the ICE40. Then on top of that, we've got the firmware in Black Crab that runs on that. And that contains the stuff that runs in Black Crab on one side and, and things like Synthesis that runs inside the IS-40. Then on top of that still, we have any host side stuff that runs um, over USB. Yeah, I could add the uh, blade example, you're right. So let's do that. Just whilst you think about what I just said. LCD blade. Add this in here. Visual Studio is really weird where it puts things. It doesn't put them at the end when you add a new one. It puts it next to the one that you're at or to the right of the one that you're at when you did it. Um, where did I put that then? It won't. Let me do it. Let's do it manually. Let me 
just looks if it picks it up actually. Hold on. I need to build. Right, did I put that in the right place? Maybe I didn't say it's a summary. Hold on. Oh, is it an error? Preprocess links caused by no such file of directory. LCD blade dot pi. Oh uh, no, that's because I did it completely and utterly wrong. Of course I did. It's not called LCD blade dot pi, is it? I'm being stupid. It's called ST7789 blade. Seven seven eight nine. Oh god, I can't type today. And it's underscore, right? Save and run that again. Yay. And if I refresh. Oh no, Twinkle, I'm going to say hello to the folks. I've been eating your suppers, your biscuits and stuff. Oh, quick hello to the folks. Oh, you're getting fluff everywhere, look. Say hello. I've finished your biscuits. Have you? Are you out in the garden? Mm. All fluff's going everywhere, of course. Little fluff monster. Uh, right, so that should be there now. Uh, yeah, I can see it. LCD played. Cool. Let me just push those changes so you can see it as well. Um, uh, LCD blade. You probably need to give it a minute or so. Let me just get some more uh, liquid refreshment.
Voilà, we's back. Time for a lemon sherbet, I reckon. Oh, Laura saying, looking better. You can put Q bus, hyperflash pie example in the hyperflash MD. Yeah. Bus hyper flash. So if it picks an up. Yeah. QSB on mem on the hardware still needs fixing. Right, let's fix that. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure what to put under here. Maybe that just needs to go under USB. We don't really have a separate name for that. It all seems to fall under the name of QS by Mem. Which also includes programming it, which is actually spy. Do we call it all QS by mem? From the host downwards or just a bit in on the board? An example that currently doesn't have a place is uart.py, but I only wrote that as a test of platform.addpmod. And the new hardware won't use that, that's right. Very true. Because we'll have that on a header.
Yeah, that can wait. This is the end of school. I'm just going to get rid of it. Sorry, I'm not saying much. Too busy with my lemon sherbet and um, just checking on what Laurie's saying. She's too appealed. Right, there isn't anything there. Did we? Did you have an example for hyper, hyper RAM? I don't think I've got the code. If we, if you did have. might be nice to have an example for hyper RAM, but I'm not sure what Um, you always say it's not easy to do a freestanding hyper RAM example using the Amaranth Orchard controller. Really needs a whole SOC. Yeah. Well, maybe later we can add something in. When we can do a video one or um, what would be quite good is like a logic capture or something. Maybe. Can be buffered into hyper room possibly
we've made some progress this evening at least. I mean it's going to be a continual job anyhow. Probably going to need some new examples as well later. Push that as is. To see what the changes are. Well, I just push those changes, those are just fairly small ones. There's a lot more to put in yet. Documentation wise, linking into the repositories and things as well would be a good idea. Logic bus, hold on. Where's logic bus? Why can't I see a logic bus on here? Hold on. Thought I had one. Hardware. Probably should have. Hmm.
to add a rare log section. Yeah, at some point. Um, the reference to Qs by Mem at the bottom of Harbour MD isn't correct now. Um, myself with that. Shouldn't really need to put that at the bottom anyhow. This bit. Where to put that stuff? Hmm. My storm has some type. Maston package contains all of the tools and synth synth emphasis synthesis to support I guess support synthesis no synthesis support so I'm not reading that. For the mystone, uh, mystone package contains all of the tools and some of the support for the mystone hardware, including Amaranth board support and PCF fuses. Look. Very good. Thing to add. A black edge, I guess. I don't, you know, I may be in two minds about this. To make it more hardware agnostic, but I'm not sure if we can do that. Easily, I think you've now covered in it everything that I've spotted, says Laurie. That's good. I'm just adding another page in here. Uh, 
this here. Because they're going to be on the end of the link anyhow. Oops. hurt for now. The hyper ram, it could be hyper ram, or it could be flash. So that might need to change anyhow. Um, tools and setup need some work yet. Yeah. yeah, we should use the OSS CAD suite. Yeah, that'll be a session in itself, I think, going through the um, setup stuff. I haven't done that in a while. We need to go through that manually as we write the documentation, I think. It'd be nice to have a fresh install. Let me just um, do a rebuild. And let me just push these changes. Um, what did I add? Typos. Just push those changes now. That's probably going to do me for this evening, I think. Oh, something sticking in my back. Thank you for helping me out with that, Laurie. Much appreciated. I know it's not a very interesting stream just doing the documentation, but we have quite a bit to catch up on. Once we get the structure in place, as you say, it'd be easier, then we can work on different bits that we need to add on. We can go back to adding some of the new stuff, which would be cool. Which will be cool. Yeah, and I'll let you know what we need to focus on. I've also got to review the hardware stuff. Um, I should be catching up with Ken this weekend, with any luck. It's his birthday on Sunday, I think. I think we'll probably go out for a curry. We keep threatening to do something together, something new, or whatever. We will have to wait and see. Yeah, it'd be good, good to catch up with Ken. So, right, I'm going to call it for this evening. Thank you for, uh, for joining me and helping out. Um, oh, my camera's gone all fuzzy. That's better. It's because it's low light. It's not coping very well. Um, I will be down on Discord as usual and um, we can continue the conversations there and I'm going to do a bit more work on the docks I think um, over the next few days and perhaps a weekend if I get a chance. Uh, thanks I post. But yeah, I'll be down on Discord anyhow, so ciao.